Hey, this is Dr. Ketu here. Today we are diving into a topic that's been around since the days of the father of medicine Hippocrates, that is lactose intolerance. If your stomach throws a tantrum every time you have ice cream, congratulations, you might be lactose intolerant or as I like to call it, dairy's least favorite customer. Milk is a staple in human diets, rich in proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals and it's particularly important for infants. But as we grow older, not everyone can tolerate milk. Lactose intolerance is more common than you might think and it can cause a range of uncomfortable symptoms like abdominal pain, bloating, gas and diarrhea. But what exactly is lactose intolerance and why does it happen? Today we are going to break all of this down, explain the science behind it and discuss how you can manage it if you are one of the many people affected by this condition. So stick around as we explore the world of lactose intolerance in detail. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty of how lactose intolerance actually works on a molecular level. If you look at this illustration here, milk has this special sugar called lactose, which is a disaccharide, meaning it's made of two sugar molecules, glucose and galactose, held together by a bond that only certain enzymes can break. This enzyme called lactase produced in the small bowel is the key player here. The job of lactase is to split lactose into glucose and galactose, which are then easily absorbed by your body and used for energy and other important functions. Imagine lactase as the person who takes apart a complicated Lego structure so that the pieces can be reused for other cooler things. Now, here is where things get tricky. Not everyone produces enough lactase especially as they get older. Lactase is like your gut's very own demolition expert, breaking down lactose like it's a Lego set, except when it takes a vacation, things get messy. This is lactase deficiency, where lactose doesn't get properly broken down. Instead of being absorbed, lactose ends up in your colon where it becomes a feast for bacteria. And when bacteria start partying with the lactose, it's like an unwanted rave party in your colon. You know what happens? They produce gas, bloating and other symptoms, well, you can imagine the rest. The production of lactase is highest right after birth, which makes sense because babies rely on milk for nutrition. But for many people, lactase levels start to drop after the first few years of their life. If you think about it, humans are the only species in the nature to consume milk not only as infants, but even as an adult. Most animals only consume their mother's milk during infancy and stop drinking milk altogether once they are weaned off from milk. Also, we are the only species in the nature who consume milk from another species. Other animals don't do that. Maybe most of us are not meant to keep drinking milk beyond our childhood. In fact, for most mammals, which means milk producing animals, including humans, the ability to digest lactose pretty much disappears after weaning, humans are a bit of an exception here. By nature, we are rule breakers, thanks to certain genetic mutations that allow some of us to keep producing lactase into our adulthood. This is particularly common in people from Northern European backgrounds, which is why they tend to have lower rates of lactose intolerance compared to, let's say, people from Southern Europe or Africa or Asia. So even if you have only about 50% of the normal lactase activity, you can still digest lactose just fine. It's when your lactase levels drop below that threshold, that's when you start having issues. But let's bust a couple of myths here. First one is being lactose intolerant isn't the same as being allergic to milk. One is a digestive drama. The other is an immune system soap opera. Totally different shows. Lactose intolerance is all about digestion while an allergy is an immune response. Totally different bees. Symptoms of a milk allergy includes usually hives, which is like skin bumps, wheezing, and anaphylaxis, which is a serious allergic reaction requiring immediate medical attention. Second myth is being lactose intolerant doesn't mean you have to break up with the dairy completely. It's more like a long distance relationship. You can visit cheese occasionally, just not all the time. Everyone's tolerance is different. Some people can handle a small latte, but others might uh, need to skip the pizza altogether. It's all about 
finding your balance. Approximately 65% of adults worldwide experience lactose intolerance, which is a very big number. It varies significantly between different ethnic groups. In Northern and Central Europe, only about 2% to 20% of people have lactose intolerance, but in Southern Europe, it's much more common. Around 40% of the population experience lactose intolerance, with Italy reaching up to 70% in some regions. If you move further south to Africa, it climbs even higher to about 65 to 75%. But the real champs of lactose intolerance are in Asia, where over 90% of the population might have a lactose intolerance. Here is an interesting twist. Even though lactase non-persistence is common, which is a fancy term for lactose intolerance, not everyone with it experiences lactose intolerance symptoms. Only those whose bodies can't adapt to low lactose levels, end up dealing with the unpleasant symptoms we talked about. What's really surprising is that despite being how common lactose intolerance is, it's often underdiagnosed. Many people live with symptoms for years before they realize lactose is the culprit. This is especially surprising when you compare it to other food-related conditions like uh, celiac disease or food allergies, which get a lot of attention even though they affect only about 5% of the adult population compared to 65% of the entire world population with the lactose intolerance. There are three main types of lactose intolerance. The first one is, which is the most common type, is primary lactose intolerance, where lactase production decreases with age. It's often hereditary and prevalent among Asians, African Americans, Mexicans, and Native Americans. Second one is called secondary lactose intolerance. This happens when the small intestine's lactase production is reduced temporarily due to illness, injury, or surgery. Conditions like Crohn's disease or celiac disease, for example, they are diseases of the small bowel primarily, or intestinal infections can lead to this type of uh, lactose intolerance. That's why I tell my patients to stay away from dairy products for a couple of weeks after they had any gastrointestinal infections. The third type, which is rare, is called congenital lactase deficiency, where infants are born without the ability to produce lactase. This condition is present from birth. Now let's dive into what lactose intolerance feels like because it's not just about having to dash to the bathroom after a glass of milk. When your body doesn't produce enough lactase, lactose ends up undigested in your gut where it's fermented by bacteria. This fermentation process leads to various symptoms, both gastrointestinal and surprisingly even beyond gastrointestinal symptoms. The most common GI symptoms include diarrhea, nausea, bloating, those embarrassing stomach gurgles, or in medical world, it's called barbaragmi, if you want to sound fancy, and abdominal pain. Symptoms usually start 30 minutes to two hours after consuming lactose-containing foods and can vary in severity depending on the degree of lactose intolerance. These symptoms occur because the undigested lactose causes your intestine to swell up like a balloon thanks to the gas produced by bacteria and the lactose pulling water into your gut. Interestingly, some people might experience constipation instead of diarrhea, possibly due to the way certain gut bacteria convert carbon dioxide into methane. Now coming to non-GI or extra intestinal symptoms, which is unrelated to the GI system symptoms. So we often talk about tummy troubles that come with lactose intolerance, but it can also affect other parts of your body. For example, headache. Some people with lactose intolerance report getting headaches after consuming dairy. Sometimes people feel tired after consuming dairy. Lactose intolerance can mess up with your focus, uh, causing brain fog. For some people, lactose can cause aches and pains in their muscles and uh, joints. Surprisingly, some folks notice uh, skin problems like acne or eczema flaring up after consuming lactose. Mood changes, it may make you irritable or down after consuming lactose. So how do we diagnose lactose intolerance? The first one is hydrogen breath test. This is considered the gold standard for diagnosing lactose intolerance. Here is how it works. After consuming lactose rich drink, you breathe into a device that measures the amount of hydrogen in your breath. If we go back to the illustration that I showed earlier, normally, Lactose should be broken down and absorbed before it reaches the colon. But if it is not, the lactose is fermented by the bacteria in the colon 
producing hydrogen gas. This hydrogen gas, which is then exhaled through the lungs where you can collect that breath sample. If your hydrogen levels spike 20 parts per million above the baseline, you're likely to have lactose intolerance. This test is non-invasive, relatively simple and cost effective, making it the gold standard. But hydrogen breath test is not perfect. Accuracy is only about 80%. There can be false negatives, particularly in people who don't produce hydrogen as a byproduct of fermentation. Also antibiotics or other factors might influence the results. On the flip side, false positive can occur due to conditions like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO, S-I-B-O. So the second test is lactose tolerance test. This is an older test where they measure blood glucose levels after consuming lactose containing solution. A raise in blood glucose indicates proper lactose digestion. This is not commonly used anymore due to potential false negatives and the need for blood dross which makes it a little bit more invasive. Then there are other tests like stool acidity test uh, or genetic test that can detect genes associated with lactose intolerance and also intestinal biopsy. But these are either too invasive or not practical to do in daily practice and are restricted to research studies. And probably the best test and the simplest test that I do in my practice is elimination diet. This is not a diagnostic test per se, but it can help confirm suspicion of lactose intolerance. Basically, it involves removing lactose containing foods for two to four weeks, then reintroducing them to observe your symptoms. This is something I recommend a lot before I do any testing. In my practice, I don't even do any of the tests that I discussed earlier unless there is confusion about their symptoms or if the patients want to know for sure if they have lactose intolerance or not. But one thing I want to make it clear here is that it is important to not self-diagnose lactose intolerance as symptoms can overlap with so many other digestive disorders. Proper diagnosis by a healthcare professional is crucial for appropriate management and to rule out other potential health issues. Okay, now coming to the management. Lactose intolerance varies from person to person with most people able to handle about 5 grams of lactose per meal. Some can tolerate up to 12 grams, which is equivalent to a cup of milk. To manage it, reduce or eliminate lactose until symptoms improve. Keep a dairy diary to track your personal tolerance, like writing, Dear Dairy Diary, Today I found out cheese doesn't love me back. Start with consuming small amounts of dairy and gradually increase it. Remember, tolerance can change based on factors like stress or medications. So now let's talk about lactose content in different dairy products. Milk, it has the highest lactose content, about 12 grams per cup of milk. Yogurt has about 25% less lactose than milk, especially those with live cultures. Interestingly, some lactose intolerant people can eat yogurt. The reason is that good bacteria in yogurt sometimes can help break down the lactose for you. So technically, it's gut-friendly food even for the lactose intolerant. Now coming to aged cheeses, generally low in lactose. Parmesan, aged cheddar, Gouda cheese, Romano cheese, aged provolone have less than 0.1 grams of lactose per serving. Fresh cheeses have higher lactose content. For example, cottage cheese has 3 to 3.5 grams per 100 grams of uh, cottage cheese. Cream cheese has 2 to 3 grams per 100 grams. Fresh mozzarella, 1 to 2 grams per 100 grams. Butter has very low lactose, only about 0.1 grams per tablespoon. Remember, the longer the cheese is aged, the lower its lactose content. Lactose content vary based on manufacturing processes and aging time. What about Indian foods? Since lactose intolerance is so common among Asians, including Indians, I want to touch on this a little bit. For example, lassi, which is uh, the traditional yogurt-based drink, often has lower amount of lactose due to fermentation process. This fermentation reduces the lactose content by about 20 to 30 percent compared to regular milk. So if you assume regular milk which has about 12 grams of lactose per cup, Lassi can have approximately 8 to 10 grams of lactose per cup, but the exact amount can vary depending on the fermentation time and specific preparation method. Paneer is another Indian food which is fresh cheese with uh, 
lower lactose content than milk. Paneer likely uh, contains about 2 to 3 grams of lactose per 100 grams. This is lower than milk but higher than aged cheeses. Curd or dahi which is often better tolerated than milk as it has much less lactose. Ghee or clarified butter almost lactose free. So now let's talk about labeling and some hidden lactose sources. In many places, food labels are required to list milk and its derivatives, including lactose. However, not all countries have strict regulations for labeling products as uh, lactose free. This can lead to confusion as some products labeled lactose free might still contain small amounts of lactose, enough to trigger symptoms in uh, sensitive individuals. Lactose isn't just in dairy. It's often used as a food additive in meats, frozen vegetables, and processed foods. This hidden lactose makes managing in, uh, lactose intolerance sometimes more challenging. So how do we manage lactose intolerance? First one is lactase enzyme supplements. These are, you can take it uh, five to 10 minutes before consuming dairy. They're available in tablets, chewables, or liquids. Effectiveness varies, adjust the dose uh, as needed. The next way to manage it is gradual introduction of uh, dairies. Start small, increase slowly. Keep a food diary to track tolerance. Try different dairy products, especially fermented foods. Consuming dairy with other foods uh, sometimes might work. Eat dairy as part of a meal. Pair with high fiber or protein rich foods. Spread dairy intake throughout the day. Choosing low lactose options is another way to manage lactose intolerance. Hard cheeses and butter are usually well tolerated. And the best way to manage lactose intolerance is to look for lactose-free dairy products. One thing that is important to know is if you are not consuming enough dairy on a regular basis, you may develop calcium or vitamin D deficiency unless you are getting these from other foods. For example, you can get calcium through these food sources. Uh, leafy greens like collard greens, kale, spinach, broccoli, white beans, soybeans, edamame, almonds, chia seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, or even fish like sardines or uh, salmon. You can uh, get calcium through soy milk, orange juice, cereals, broccoli, uh, some of the dried foods, and uh, even uh, tofu. Uh, made with calcium sulfate. For vitamin D, you can get it through salmon, tuna, egg oaks, mushrooms exposed to UV light, fortified foods like plant-based milks, orange juice, cereals, of course, sunlight exposure. If you're not consuming enough of these foods, you should take calcium 1000 to 1200 milligrams per day and also vitamin D 600 to 800 international units per day. Thank you for joining me today as we explored the ins and outs of lactose intolerance. Remember, managing lactose intolerance doesn't have to be struggle. With the right strategies and knowledge, you can enjoy a balanced diet and feel great. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more health tips just for you. Let's navigate this journey together and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Stay healthy and stay happy.